everyone. How about this amazing Rails Comp 2019? I have hope you I hope you all have had an amazing week like I have and I really appreciate you coming to my talk cuz I know you're probably tired. My name is Colleen and I run a Ruby on Rails consulting business. I'm here today to teach you a little bit about my adventures or misadventures as they were migrating a production application from Shrine to active storage using Amazon S3 storage. I actually used Shrine when I did this for my client, but for the purposes of this talk, I'm gonna use Paperclip because the five people that responded to my Twitter poll said they used Paperclip more than Shrine. <laughs> but first, I'd like to start with a little story. So, how did I get here? I was contacted by a cool new startup looking for a Rails developer to do just that, migrate their solution from Shrine to Active Storage. I was excited to work with this company, and this was the first time I was gonna get to use Active Storage, and I was very excited to use Active Storage. I had actually attended the Active Storage talk, I believe it was Rails Comp last year, so I was feeling quite confident in my ability to migrate this application to Active Storage. So for those of you who are not yet on Rails 5.2, Let's start with what is Active Storage. So Active Storage is an easy way to attach files to Active Record objects and store those files in cloud-based storage. Have you ever needed to add an avatar to a user or maybe a resume to an applicant? Active Storage helps you take care of all of those file attachment needs. Well, that's great, Colleen but Paperclip is working fine for me. Why should I go through the trouble of switching? Well, that's a good question. Why should you migrate to active storage? Well, the first and possibly most important reason is because active storage is now the built-in solution for handling file uploads to cloud storage in Rails. It supports Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. And this one's fun. There's no additional migrations needed. Maybe if you remember, with Paperclip, every time you add a new file, you have to write a new migration. Active Storage is different, it doesn't work that way. And if I still haven't convinced you, Paperclip is deprecated, so you're out of luck. <laughs> so I accepted the contract, and the first thing I did was I went and looked at the Active Storage docs. So in my experience, the documentation for Rails is usually excellent, and Active Storage appeared to be no different. Step one, install Active Storage. Step two, configure cloud storage. Step three, add an attachment to a model. And step four, let the magic of Rails extrapolate away all of the heavy lifting for you, and it just works. Well, has anyone tried to migrate an application to Active Storage following these steps? If you have tried, you might know that implementing Active Storage in a new application, you can follow the steps, and it is relatively easy. But migrating to Active Storage can be quite challenging. Why is that? Well, Active Storage is fundamentally different from Paperclip. Paperclip works by attaching file data to the user table. So for example, here we have um, an avatar on a user. So if we added an avatar to our user using Paperclip, it's gonna change the user's table. It adds these four columns to your user's table. I didn't include the whole table here so you could actually see what Paperclip does. Active storage is different. Active storage creates two new tables the Active Storage Attachments table, and the Active Storage Blobs table. So, if we revisit our steps, I'm gonna say that step three <laughs> had an attachment to a model. Well, Active Storage is not gonna be able to access the data since there's currently nothing in your Active Storage tables. 
But we can't do step three yet. But we can do step one and step two. So step one is install active storage, create the tables, and then you need to configure your cloud storage. So the way this is set up right, right here is we have an Amazon, which is going to be our production storage, and Amazon Dev, which is our dev storage. I created this little contrived example for this talk. So you can see I came up with a very clever bucket name there, a really fun bucket for Colleen, which was unique. So go me. Um, but when we did this on our production application, this is how we had it set up as well. And it's really going to depend on your setup, but I would highly recommend testing this on a dev bucket um, on your cloud storage provider. And after um, you configure it in storage.yaml, you then have to configure it on a per environment basis. So what I'm showing you here is development, and as I said, you're going to configure, configure it um, to use Amazon Dev, and production would be using Amazon. Oh, so, okay, great. So that took like one minute. So at this point, you already have active storage installed, and now your active storage tables exist in your database. So let's talk about step three. I have changed step three to say move avatar data from the user table to the active storage tables. Well, how do we move data from one table to another in our database? Rake task. A rake task. Um, so we are going to write a rake task together. And let's talk about this rake task. We're going to be moving a good amount of data, and we're not, it's not a one-to-one, -one, because we have one user table and two active storage tables, so we're also going to be mapping some data. So the only way to make this work is to understand what we are doing. I don't really think there's a copy and paste solution for this particular problem. So let's talk a little more about what we are trying to do. So we are moving this data from the users table which I'm going to show you again, to the active storage attachments in active storage blobs. And we're technically copying it over there for now. But um, So I don't know about you, but I find reaching into my database with SQL to change records on a production application to be a little bit scary. Plus, I was told I wasn't going to have to write SQL. <laughs> <laughs> this is from last year, so this is recent. Um, but alas, it seems to be the case here. So before we jump into what the rake task is going to be, let's talk about the active storage tables. Because as I said, you really need to understand what you're doing here. So the first table I want to talk about is the active storage attachments table. We're going to start with the name, which is the name of your attachment, in this case, avatar. Then you have your polymorphic association columns, um, user and the user ID, and then you have your blob ID. Okay, so that's table one. Now table two is the blob table. So if we look at the blobs table, the uh, key is the location of your current file in Amazon S3 storage, and then you have your file name, your content type, byte size, I don't know why I skipped that one, and your checksum. All right, so how do these tables relate to one another? So I'm gonna do one table at a time. So on your left is the users table, and on your right is the active storage attachments table. So user becomes our record type, the ID becomes our record ID, and the name becomes just avatar. Okay, so now I have users table, user table on the left, and the blobs table on the right. And we have avatar file name, that's from our user table, is going to go to our blobs as the file name. Avatar content type is going to go to the content type. And file size is going to go to byte size. Oh, so let's get started on that rake task. So the good people of ThoughtBot put together the skeleton of a task um, that's an excellent starting place. 
As I mentioned, they actually um, use a migration. As I mentioned, I would recommend using a rake task. So if we look at this, if we look at this, we get our blob ID, and then these two statements are just defining our insert statements. So this is actually all pretty cut and paste for you. After that, what's happening here is we're looping through all of the models and pulling out the attachment names. The important thing to realize here is this code that's used to pull out the attachment name is specific to Paperclip, because that's how Paperclip names the files on your user table, right? So that's what we're looking at right there, avatar underscore file underscore name. So if we go, this is the same slide, the same piece of code. So if you look at this, that is specific, that's just pulling out your avatar string and that is specific to Paperclip. So as you are going through, depending on what gem you are migrating from, you have to be aware of this. And all this is doing is pulling out the string avatar. So once we get the attachment names, the next step is to loop through the models and their associated attachments. And as a side note, what I wanted to share, if you only have one or two models with attachments or one model with one attachment, you don't have to do all of this. You can just call out the model and the attachment name instead of looping through every single model looking for attachments. So the thing I wanted to show you here is this. The reason I want to show you this is this is instance, which is just the instance um, of your user. So this is instance, our attachments, avatar in our example. So um, user.avatar.path.blank. That statement is dependent on the relationship Paperclip creates between user and avatar. That is important. It's important because this is going to take two deploys. So why does this process require two deploys? Well, the rake task we're building right now needs that user.avatar relationship defined by Paperclip I just showed you and circled. And it needs the active storage tables because it needs a place to put to move the data to, to put the data. So it needs to put the data in the active storage tables. Now, active storage needs data in the active storage, in the active storage tables. So you can't run active storage without first running the rake task, and the rake task is dependent on Paperclip. And we will revisit this. All right, so let's go back to our rake task. This right here is, um, okay, so this is just calling our blob insert statement. And the thing I wanted to point out here are the key and checksum methods. And the other ones are just, you know, user.avatar file name, content type, file size. But I want to call out the key and checksum for a few reasons. You're going to have to write these methods yourself. I didn't actually include my solution because your solution is going to be so specific to your paperclip configuration and your Amazon S3 configuration. And the, okay, so the key, the key is where active storage is going to look for your files. As a um, funny or frustrating aside, depending on how you want to look at it, I was using paperclip, so I assume the key would be user.avatar.path. So that's what I put in my rake task. Well, maybe it was the way I had my S3 bucket set up or my paperclip config. That actually returned a forward slash right there. And because of that forward slash, when active storage went to look for my files, could not find my files. So everyone knows that keys are hard. So that's a, that's a potential pitfall as you're going through this process. And then checksum. So we, when I did this on production, we had about 80,000 images, so it wasn't too many. So I actually opened each image and ran it through the MD5 process. I think some of the gems actually provide the checksum for you. So that'll just be depending on what you're migrating from. All right, so that is then all of those records we need to write. The very last step is just writing to your attachments table. And that's your attachment, which we discussed is the string avatar model name, which is our user instance ID. 
Okay, excellent. So that is the whole rake task. So the next thing to do after you have run your rake task is figure out if it worked. So the quickest way to figure out if it worked is to actually see if you've created the correct number of blob records and attachment records. If you're feeling feisty, you can go into your database, take one record from your user table and see if it has transposed correctly to your attachments tables and your blobs tables. But if you're not, that's fine. We'll figure it out when we get there. All right, I feel like I kind of sped read through a lot of code there. So let's do a brief overview of what we have done. So we created the active storage tables by installing active storage and running the migrations. We configured the active storage cloud storage. So that was storage.yaml and that was configuring on a per environment basis. This one's kind of long. We wrote the whole rake task to create the user avatar records in the attachments and blobs tables. And we source that data from the user table or whatever table ha currently has the file attached to it. And we have hopefully confirmed that records were created in the active storage tables. So we don't actually know if the records are right unless you took the time to actually peek into your database and look. Um, we don't know if they're right, but we know they exist. So that's good enough to move on to the next step. Okay, before you move on to the next step, I would highly recommend checking out a new branch. Technically, you do not have to do this. You can push one branch up, run your rake task, and then push the second branch up with active storage. But for testing, I think it's a lot easier to do a new branch. Um, this was my preferred method. As I mentioned, I got the key wrong the first time. So I had one branch with paperclip and the rake task and another branch with active storage. Run the rake task, use active storage. If it did, doesn't work, you can blow out the active storage records, fix the rake task, rewrite to the table, and try again. As I said, here's our deploy. Run the rake test, then go to your active storage models and views. So now I will show you that. All right, so now we have installed active storage. We have data in our tables, our active storage tables. So now we can actually, preferably on a new branch, in my opinion, um, now we can actually change our code and our models, views, controllers, and tests to use the active, store, active storage functionality. So the thing I really want to show you, this is, you know, this is why it looks so easy in the docs, right? Because you just do has one attached. Um, but it only works, you know, if there's data. So the reason I wanted to show you this is I wanted to show you the bottom here. I wanted to show you views. If you look at the views, you can see if you're going to be using multiple sizes of images, you use something called variance. And the cool thing about variance is you can just pick your image size kind of on the fly. You aren't hamstrung into specific sizes that you've predefined. So let's talk a little bit more about variance because if you're working with images, as I was, they're very important. So paperclip. Paperclip, I think pre-process is all your image sizes. So they're going to give you your whatever they are, large, thumb, medium, whatever sizes you're working. So active storage is going to do a lazy transform on the original blob on the fly, hence the airplane. Um, and Rails does cache the variant so that the processing is only going to happen the first time it's generated. So here I was in this process of of working for this client, um, migrating this application, and I had a rake task. I knew it was working. I had looked at my database. Active Storage could find my file, and I ran it, and probably 30%, we were a very image-heavy website, it's important to note, probably 30% of the images were blurry. That's how I felt right then. <laughs> So why were 30% of our images blurry? They were blurry 
because Active Storage uses Minimagic for image transformation. Minimagic does not support the advanced image processing that we had been using with Shrine. And that, I think, is, is pretty important. Um, and that was a really big pain point for us. But fortunately, there will be a happy ending. So we did this, I want to say I did this, it was eight months to a year ago. And I feel like we were a little early to the active storage party, mainly because of this image processing snafu we had to deal with. Fortunately for us, Rails 6 should be solving some, this specific issue. Active Storage on Rails 6 has deprecated Mini Magic and is now using the image processing gem. So fortunately, that image, I believe it was like the resize to fill, resize to fit, um, that did not work with Mini Magic. All right, so. We have already done what's up there, deploy with paperclip, run the rake task and the active storage tables. And the next step is to deploy with the active storage models and views implemented that I just showed you. And if that works, then you have completed, well, made good progress on your migration to active storage. So let's revisit all of our steps. All right, so we installed active storage, configured the cloud storage, moved the avatar data from the user table to the active storage tables, and now active storage can work its magic and it should just work. The end. Thank you for coming.